Good evening. Uh, should we start now? All right. Uh, welcome all. Uh, those who don't know me, my name is my name is Vishwajit Sengupta. I graduated from this college in 1981 in the discipline of electrical engineering. And I have been part of a global alumni association uh, in the executive committee number eight and now number nine. And in particular, in the executive committee, I am a member of the Student Connect Committee. So about a month back, a little over a month back, uh, we had a meeting with the current students and we were just discussing as to what they need in terms of knowledge. And in particular, we dis discussed that an institute like this uh, that teaches engineering and then there are other disciplines as well, uh, outside of that curriculum, what else can be discussed? What else is needed in terms of meeting the challenges uh, when you graduate from this institute? Obviously, we were not discussing the whole gamut of stuff that are needed, but uh, in our own way, in a small way, as part of giving back to our college uh, from the Global Alumni Association. Uh, we have been trying to do, uh, you know, uh, several stuff, and this is one such endeavor. So in that discussion, what was discussed was, how about public policy? That's not something that is taught in our institute. And uh, that's something that we would face in any ways uh, when we go to the out, you know, bigger world outside of this college. And that was really the uh, introduction or, or the, the, uh, the reason for this evening's program. I'm very delighted that we have with us today, Mr. Arvind Kumar. Um, he is, uh, I'll just introduce Mr. Kumar to you. He's sitting in the front row there. He has worked for over 40 years in senior leadership positions in high performing family owned businesses and multinational corporations in the durables, fast moving consumer goods, uh, food retail and financial services sector. In his corporate career, as part of farms like Asian Paints, Marico, Dabur, Britannia, Edelweiss and PepsiCo, Mr. Kumar has worked in different business functions like sales, marketing, factory management, supply chain, corporate affairs, commodities purchases, and international businesses. His exposure has been to markets across the globe where he held CEO positions in international food company, Dabur International, and Strategic Food International Company, uh, which is a Britannia subsidiary. Mr. Kumar is now engaged in the area of public policy and public affairs and attempts to bring a science and value-based interface between industry and the external environment. He graduated from St. Stephen's College in Delhi in 1978 with a BA Honours in Economics and completed management studies from the Indian Institute of Management, Ahmedabad, in 1980. His specialization was marketing. So, ladies and gentlemen, it gives me immense pleasure to introduce today's guest speaker and my very dear friend, Mr. Arvind Kumar. Please welcome him to the podium.
I now request uh, our president, uh, Global Alumni Association president, Mr. Amitabh Dutto, to take it from here. Thank you, Vishwajit. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. It's a pleasure for me to be here and give a little bit of background. But before that, I request my fellow director to be on the dais. Professor Mullika Ghosh, HOD, is to be on the dais. Let me give a little bit of uh, background, though we should have told about, but how this, uh, how this lecture takes place. Our beloved uh, ex-students, Dada, Shamal Mitro, he's 1967 civil. He made an endowment, it's a quite a large sum, in name of, it is very interesting, in name of his grandfather and his father. His grandfather, uh, Amulla Choran Mitra, graduated in the year 1910 in civil, and his father, uh, Swelendra Kumar Mitra, graduated in civil 1941. So we are really happy to have this opportunity, and this program is actually possible through these endowments given by Samuel Mitra, and it is a great pleasure, though it is health, Samuel Mitra is here present. I can even request Shamulda to be here on the dais. Please, come up. Please come up. And of course, uh, I, I also very much uh, happy and pleased to thank uh, Mr. Aranit Kumar to agree upon, because this is uh, uh, rather a desire of Mr. Mitro, Shamulda, was that the such lectures will be non-engineering about something which is not directly what we hear every day from colleges. So idea was that, and Vishuji took the initiative, and he put his friend, Sri Aravind Kumar, he agreed. And I thank you, Aravind Kumar Saad, for agreeing to this. And I also thank Shen Gupta, Vishuji, for organizing his coming here. And now I request uh, Professor Mollika Ghosh to take it over from me. Okay, uh, at the outset, I think Sir Professor Murthy is very busy, so I would at the outset request him to deliver his address and I am very, very grateful uh, to be able to uh, be a part of this program. Uh, at the, you know, when we were in the humanities and social sciences department, when we have been thinking about various kinds of programs, Professor Murthy has been very encouraging. And as we move on from the from industry 4.0, about which he speaks very often, that is the fourth industrialization phase to industry 6.0, which should be our goal. And we are looking at issues of sustainability, at issues of interdisciplinarity. The importance of such a lecture uh, can be felt very widely. And in our department, uh, let me also uh, let uh, those of you who are not very conversant with the recent changes in the syllabus, I would like to let you know that the courses that we teach, we keep in mind, you know, uh, industry readiness on the part of the students to make them, uh, you know, industry ready. And we have courses till the final semester. So students do benefit as we realize, you know, when we, they keep coming back and telling us about it. And policy matters, public policy matters in a country as large as ours is, of course, very important. 
and we know this very well. So without you know prolonging my uh, address any further, I would also like to take the opportunity to thank everybody who is here in the uh, room, starting from Professor Murthy, our director, Professor and uh, Mr. Arvind Kumar, who has traveled uh, a, a long way to be here with us. I thank uh, the members of the Global Alumni Association, Mr. Amitav Dutta, Mr. Proshenjit Chakraborty, and uh, Mr. Bishwajit Shengupto, and other alumni members who are present and who are also present online. I would also like to thank the registrar, Professor Oniban Gupto, with whom I have interacted for organizing this program. And of course, uh, Professor Aurobindo Rai, who has done a lot of running back and forth and he's been a key fig figure. I can also see our, one of our uh, previous colleagues and our former registrar, Professor Imbunak Sinha, who's here. And I also uh, extend a hearty welcome to my other colleagues, students, and scholars assembled in this room. And now I request Professor Muthi to give his inaugural address. venturing into. Good evening to one and all present. I think it's uh, my pleasure to be here amongst this elite gathering of uh, Gabay Su and uh, the great stalwarts of this uh, college. And uh, first of all, my uh, reverences to Shamalji and you know, for you know, putting this endowment and making this happen. So uh, from all of us, I think we should once again applaud the kind of effort and we need this kind of you know support you know for connecting the alumni to the current students you know on such very very topics as has been chosen today and arvind ji for you know agreeing to deliver and malika ji for organizing this and the entire gabisu team uh, and uh, you know sinha ji and uh, all my students and faculty colleagues here it's my proud privilege to be here and you know uh, to inaugurate this in fact uh, uh, i'll be also like looking into the topic actually it's quite interesting I uh, would like to stay back, but then only for some time I'll be there because of some other meeting. But uh, I'm really happy that, you know, this kind of meetings or uh, lectures are being organized by Gavesu. And, you know, when I took over as a director uh, three months ago, uh, you know, in fact, the first mail was from Gavesu only, I should say. So I must really thank them, you know, for the kind of connect they made to this institute and to the uh, administration. And then uh, we have been talking to various alumni and uh, the kind of contribution they have made so far and continuing to make. And we have now some uh, good plans of, you know, connecting to alumni. And uh, we are thinking to, you know, meet uh, all, you know, alumni stakeholders of this uh, great institute and uh, work, for, uh, work with them. And to take this to, you know, there are some challenges which we are going to address systematically, of, of course, because I'm, a, I'm a slightly new, obviously, uh, three months only now. So we are getting into now, used to. I'm feeling at home now. So that's a great thing that now I'm feeling now. I'm sure uh, uh, the connect will be continued and I'll try to work hard to see that, you know, how this institute can be grown uh, further uh, with our faculty, students and the great support of alumni. So with this, I wish this lecture a grand success and thank you very much for choosing IEST Shippur, you know, for this great lecture. Thank you. I request Mr. Arvind Kumar to begin his lecture, and I'm sure we will all enjoy it immensely. Yeah, 
I was being here, I was just came in on the ticket of the day. I was looking at the ticket. This is forward, this is back. And how do you this? The, you have the yeah, press back. Yeah? Yeah. Well done. Yeah. This is just what happened. Thank you. Okay, I asked the director sir, how long will he be here? So he says 10, 15 minutes. Uh, can you hear me? So I asked uh, Mr. Murthy as to uh, how long he'll be here. So 10 to 15 minutes. So let me finish my uh, first part. Uh, it is not, uh, you have to thank me, I have to thank you people. All right. Uh, when Vishwaji said that, uh, would you like to come? I said, certainly I'll come subject to a certain personal issues which Bishwa everybody is aware of, I said, certainly I would like to come. This is an area of Bishwajit's old college, this is his old friend, this is a heart of Bengal, uh, this is an area of my interest, so, and you are paying me airfare, and I am a semi-retired guy. Semi-retired people have lots and lots of time, so I said I would certainly like to come. So it is my privilege, sincerely, to come to this uh, forum. Uh, <clears throat> I'm actually very fascinated by Bengal, and it's a sincere thing why I'm saying that, because I think other than Delhi, uh, which has its own implication background, Bengal is the deepest of the history from ancient times, which fascinates me quite a bit on that. You know, and uh, so it has a fantastic history, Fantastic wealth of old time, uh, fantastic uh, culture, which I'm still trying to fathom. I told him I want to see. And now, obviously, fantastic politics. So uh, all of it. Uh, and it's not a, I, I mean, I, I, I'm really fond of Bengal because of the strengths and all. So much so that I consulted for a company free of cost other than out of pocket in Dhupkuri district. Yeah. There was a small shop type guy in Dhupkuri. So I said, fabulous. At least I'll see Siliguri. I'll, I'll eat uh, Gondara chicken. I will go and see. Uh, so Bengal really uh, fascinates and I'm, I like it a lot. So all of it means that I'm very happy to be called here. Okay. No, the net surplus is with me, not with you. All right, sir. Uh, and once you come here, I understood this fabulous institute. Uh, I realized that my father was from the first engineering college of the country, which is Thomasson College, known as Rurki. Uh, he passed out in 51, I think, from there. And he was in irrigation department before he joined the railways. Uh, so all this adds up uh, to my growth and others. And uh, so thank you once more, uh, uh, all of you, to call me. This is a genuine thanks, right? Uh, net surplus is with me, not with you, right? Uh, the one thing more, which I was not there in my thing, that I have uh, done a professor of practice uh, full course, not an ad hoc culture exercise, a full course in, for MBA students in a private university. Uh, on strategic business, which means to say that I fully understand the pressures of a registrar, the pressure of a dean, the pressure of a director uh, from very uh, close quarters, uh, and obviously the pressure of academics and the new gen students. Okay, the first time when I came, I was, uh, when first lecture, I was quite dazed because you are all the new gen, okay? And I was very dazed by how to handle. And I was getting irritated because we are old gen, no? Then I sat back, I said, why am I getting irritated? This is the set and this is the new gen. I should acclimatize myself to them rather than they acclimatize to me. I made a few changes here and there. And I think I, it was a better relationship which came up after that. Uh, so, um, Vishwajit, when I went through this, uh, he said that uh, it's very heavy. 
So I said, Vishwajit, if you have a heavy topic, you can't make it simple. I'll try to simplify it and we work for an hour and a half. I said, secondly, don't misjudge the uh, brightness of these new kids. They're brighter than us. I won't have gotten into IIM Ahmedabad today. My brother who was in the IAS won't have gotten into the IAS today. And my colleagues and all who held high position won't have gotten today. So these are very bright set of children. Uh, and therefore, they will follow it quickly, faster. My faith in your gen. The only thing is that you guys are deflected with new gen WhatsApp here, there, so find difficult to attend. So if my suggestion is, and I've taken permission from Sinaji, don't put yourself on silent. Maybe put it on for one and a half hours, put it on flight mode. I have done with my son. Okay. I think then for one and a half hours this time, uh, it will be well utilized. But I see uh, the children here not even looking at their cells. So it's a, I can't make typeface. Uh, I don't see other than one gentleman looking at his cell. That's okay. That's the average. I'm not even. So try and concentrate because then you will get the best out of uh, this. It is heavy, but you will follow it very fast. Hmm? Uh, so no issue with this. I have put mine on flight mode. I've only put in the timer so that I can see that I can, I'm timing myself well, right? So with this, I will start off on this fabulous topic. So as uh, we, uh, I saw international markets, we had factories, we had governments to deal uh, with all the companies. I saw a certain common thread uh, across on this topic, public policy and public administration. Some things don't change. Some things are very different. And well, because they're very different with all negatives, that's why the US is where it is in 200 years. And we have recovered a lot since independence, recovered a lot. But I'll show you some figures, how far are we, and we don't have anywhere to look but inside ourselves as a country for our destiny and move this. But the principle will uh, remain the same. And even if it is the US elections, if anybody is following, the principles will remain the same. All right, it's the thoroughness, the movement, the larger thing, how do you handle where various parts of public policy, which I'm going to say, that differs, competence differs. Uh, and that's why I presume but obviously we have come a long way today and this is India's next 10 years. Uh, I'm telling Vishwajit that I personally want to resign my green card, uh, the one which you get uh, in about two years time because I think genuinely for me, the destiny of India is good and a lot has happened in India in the last two decades. Far more could have happened and I'll give a few illustrations on how far more could have happened from this, right? I'll move further with this uh, example, with this introduction. And once more, thank you very much for this opportunity. So I will uh, speak on the following aspects. Uh, there'll be about 25 slides and Vishwajit broke it up today for me to make it more friendly. Uh, at the end of 25 slides, given the time and what time we started, you see whether you want to go into the next 10 slides because that's an actual example, which I will give you, right? Of how public policy actually operated in a certain area, which then we can take a call of uh, given our time and other commitments, what we have. Okay, so we will today speak on, uh, how do you press this? Ah. One is, no, I, here. Okay, yeah. So one whole thing is, in simple terms, what is public policy? There are so many definitions, and I have picked up one definition as to what do you mean by public policy, right? It'll take a slide to go through. Then we will go on to a conceptual framework of how public policy is actually made in real life situation there is a difference in public policy and public affairs. Public affairs means when a law is given and you have to interpret it, it's easier. 
all the commissioners, the deputy commissioner, and all the commissioners, so to say, are not making policy. They are only administering a policy, and there also so much of confusion occurs for different reasons, which I will tell. Public policy is a far more intellectual exercise as to how do you make those laws. And that is a very, very intellectual exercise with a lot of ramifications. So I'll give that conceptual framework and how it is done with a few illustrations on what is happening. Then I'll give how historically it has developed. Basically, it's a very nascent type of a thing. You know, management is nascent, public policy is even more nascent, though growing quite a bit uh, in trend. So, Kafi Kacha is quite Kacha even now, though US and all have gone well ahead in terms of evolution of this. India is also developing quite a bit. Now, the increasing challenges, you know, long back, I was talking to a, a cousin of mine who was 76 batch of the IAS. He said earlier the collector would want a road, he'll just say road one other. <laughs> Nobody to check. Today, 100 people will come. So he can't make a road. And I will link that with the civil aviation policy, how this uh, whole issue of Udaan, uh, Ude Desh Ka Aam Nagarik, how policy drove, and you can all see the benefit of it. Today, you can see how Udaan was conceptualized because I had the, I had the, a privilege of knowing the secretary, Mr. Uh, Chaube, who was anchoring it at that point of time, the Odan scheme. But it's very difficult now because of so many stakeholders, chaos is uh, getting more and more difficult. But in everything in India is getting difficult. In the world, it is getting difficult. Today, you guys are brighter than us. So it is getting difficult. So why do we even say that this is an issue rather than recognizing it? Then there are three parts of public policy. One is framing, second is implementing, and third is evaluation. Now, as you well know, all of them have complexities, and I'll go through the three parts of uh, the elements. What are the India issues? I'll come and some, I'll throw in a few, uh, some, uh, I've picked up two videos which will, lighten uh, the mood of this serious topic and hopefully will illustrate a point. I picked up two videos. So one is at the 11th slide, one is at the 18th slide. So if Mr. Murthy can wait till the 11th slide, I'll be grateful. <laughs> and uh, that way, but that way, that will be about 15, 20 minutes down the line. Yeah. And uh, this is the one which we can see because I personally anchored this, uh, the civil aviation policy. And we can check out how the fatigue is, interest is, because there I was back to back. And this is important because that is linked to how many of you have seen IC814 serial? Uh, the one which is very topical now, this hijacking of. Uh, um, so actually, it is IC814 hijacking will lead to the civilization policy, which uh, I know the history and how it got again sabotaged in a way by interests. So if you are interested in that, uh, as to what happened, uh, as to why the, why the plane got refueled in Amritsar, uh, that's a history of where we went and even talked to Ajit Doval and all that, I was involved in it. So if you have interest in that area, that's a real life, which I had anchored, left TV, okay? So I'll quickly move now, and public policy is of recent origin, 1950s, but you know, management also started during that time, but public policy has lagged behind on that. Now it's picking up very fast. Every third kid wants to do public policy. Uh, why they want to do, I'm still trying to discover, but this just picked up and I'll give you a few illustrations as to how institutions are coming up and looking at it as a discipline, not only here, but in the US also. Even the US it is underdeveloped, but obviously US is a generation ahead of us in these areas. So far more, far more uh, than this. Indian perspectives, India is even weaker 
India is even weaker and partly historically we are weaker, partly international literature has low applicability to India. Uh, we can't even copy it as easily because as you know, India is India. You have to have your own model, right? So it is even weaker conceptually and right? So uh, that is a weakness with which we run. And then there are infirmities here. Why I'll say later, why we are not even strengthening it strong enough for a future thing. Therefore, how we are handling big four, AI, all those areas which we are doing, we are certainly, my view is, which I talk to the bureaucrats and even politician friends of mine, that we are not picking up and we are, we are trying to catch up all the time. Why? I have a view which I discussed with the politician and friends. So behind the closed doors, they sometimes understand. Sometimes they have egos they don't understand. The IS officers don't want to understand. Uh, the politicians understand it properly, okay? The brightest person today in India is the politician. No question. They can hold, I'm putting a swing in this. If a full-fledged secretary to government in India, in one half an hour, Two hours, a politician without any background of this subject will understand, absorb, find out, check out, and knows what to manipulate. I mean, the entire picture, uh, he's a, I talked to my brother, I said, Dhoti, Dhoti, wale, se kya karte ho? He said, never misses the Dhoti for the brains. Okay? They are so bright. And I've seen this again and again. Then how do they use the brightness is a separate point. Right? Uh, no, uh, I'll come to that. We had stationed people like Atal Bihari ji or even Nehru ji, uh, and, and narrative keeps keeps uh, keeps changing. But I am talking. I'm not getting into that. Beyond the point, other than one serial uh, break. So simply, and you know, it's not so easy. As last well has said, and I'm still overall, and I'll give you a. Uh, example after that, who gets what, when, and how? Because resources are limited. Today, Kamala Harris is talking economic policy. She is not talking deficits. She is not talking debt. She is not talking threat of to the dollar. Unless you have round up on that, how do you exactly handle it? Because resources are limited and needs are unlimited. And the people who are the lowest level are the voters. They want free. The middle class are the sandwiched out. We either don't vote or don't vote, but we pay most of the taxes. But the resources are limited. Our deficits in India are also have inched up. Our debt has inched up. So who gets what, when, and how in the current context is a simple definition of public policy. Now, how do you do that? I mean, again, it is a way, but there's a concept of the greatest common good. So it can go into a PhD or mark exercise of each one of them, but given the limited time, we have to see what is the greatest common good. How do you decide the greatest common good? It basically depends on the ideological framework. The socialistic, the capitalistic, the fascist, the communist. How do you define the greatest common good, okay? It depends on the broad economic reasoning and the ideological framework. So the capitalist will want greatest common real in terms of profit moving in a trickle down in the social. The communist will want everything owned by the government. The socialist doesn't require any definition. So it depends on the ideological framework. We are a socialist country. You know, question we are a socialist country. And that's how we have to balance the, what is the greatest. But can we leave industry aside? No. What was the trickle down on thing? Yeah. Should we allow malfeasance of industries? Certainly not. <laughs> but then the commonalities which come, uh, I'll give a few uh, that uh, if you see. Uh, Anyway, I'll leave that aside. But if you see a clear analysis of this play between all of this uh, in the electoral bond, 
uh, you will find a little pattern. But these are the, but finally, you have to go with the greatest common good conceptually. I'll give an illustration on this, uh, if time permitting. And then it's a mission statement, which is followed by actual rules. Now, all these are technical things. Rule making is actually as uh, the late Arun Jaitley had said, the weakest we have in public policy implementation. It's the weakest. Our section heads and all law ministry don't know how to put the dots and commas. The moment you don't put dots and commas, a new thing will start coming. So it is ideology, rules, mission. As I said, it's very easy to say it should be done. It's very difficult. Often it is pushed by public clamor, belief, what's happening today and the unfortunate incidents in, in Calcutta. It's all rough, rough, upper niche. I had studied the case of the Nirbhaya case in, in, in uh, Delhi. Do anybody remember the Nirbhaya case? Bachos? I went through the detail of that. I went through the detail of that thoroughly, including me knowing the police commissioner, Mr. Uh, Mr. Kumar at that time. I knew Sandeep Dikshit and I knew Sheila Dikshit. So all this huff puff which is going on uh, in a noisy democracy, public outcry. And then I had studied the 700 page report by Justice Verma, not fully, uh, who was who put in that uh, legislation and still something happened. Now, Rarely it is proactive in India. Even GST can be said partly proactive, but we are the fourth country which implemented GST. Yeah? Very rarely original. I think the best of originality we can put in self siksha avyan a bit. Uh, we can put in telecom policy a bit. What happened? Uh, rest are IT policy and all that has just evolved. India advantage of laptop here, there is just... Uh, Nothing to do with public policy. In fact, public policy had come, it would become a problem. Government has stayed away and private entrepreneurship have gone. Not vision led, it is rarely original. And the policy makers are extremely burdened with routine and inexperience. From morning to night, they are signing files, they are doing this, they are trying to bat uh, political things, they are trying to bat their thing. And where do they have one? The health secretary will become the petroleum secretary. Within one shot, this is not there in the developed countries. Okay. Uh, here you have police, since you are talking police. For a long time, they said law and order have to be kept different from criminal investigation. They are two separate skills. But here, slightest criminal investigation, uh, we'll go to CBI. That's the investigation authority. At long back, it is said that keep these two things separately. So old burden of routine, inexperience of policy makers. And this is only policy execution, what you're seeing right now. In Calcutta, what you're seeing is only policy execution issues. Where is the policy making in all this? I'm not trying to be uh, sullen or negative, but as a certain expert, I can see uh, what uh, happens, you may not know Mr. Pachananda, who was a commissioner about 10, 15 years back. I, he's a friend, so I talk on these matters with him and how it swings suddenly, right? Right, now I'll give a small, a small uh, example. Uh, assuming a teacher comes and she has a chocolate cake. Okay, and there are 40 children like you. And he said, cake, cake bato. How will the teacher decide? Some thoughts. A teacher in a primary school or secondary school gets a chocolate cake and he has to cut and give it. How would he, how would he do it? I want some participation, whatever thoughts. Huh? Keep one and pass the rest. And the rest, how it has to be divided? He'll keep one and pass the rest. Fair enough, I'm trying to ask. So the teacher will keep how big to himself? I'm just exercising the thought. How much for himself? How much? Yeah. Keeping all of the they can get memorized for purpose duration. 
No, so I'm saying simple. Uh, your point is more administration. I'm saying that supposing there are so many children right now, and I'm keeping, uh, assuming they are also part of it, okay? This is a hint. Assuming they are also part of it. Uh, how, but supposing they are only children, how will they, how will the teacher divide? Aap hai Padra bees, these. Abhi, kaise karega divide? Give some idea. Are, a teacher come, there's a chocolate cake, there are 20 kids, how, she, how will she divide? Uh, are you not able to answer? Or are you seeing that there's a complexity in it? Or you're not talking? 20 pieces? Yeah? Any other? That's what he also said, 20 pieces. And those 20 pieces will be equally, okay, any others? Quickly, quickly, because otherwise I lose time. Huh? Equal. Okay, fine. No, no, it's a public policy. They are driven thing. Cutting the cake and giving, as I said, what is public policy? How, who has to get what, by when? <laughs> okay, now I'll tell you, this is a classic case of the chocolate cake. And would you like to say, okay, there are elders here and youngers, they're supposing you have to give to everyone. Maybe the youngers will get more and the elders a little less. Or will be equal over. Because elders can go and give it to the children. Right. Let me carry on the complexity. Uh, the, the article by, famous article by Stone goes into this and your web will show it to you in case you are more interested. But it talks of, it, this is okay, but there are eight challenges to this route of distributing that cake. It's a famous theoretical uh, article. The lady is called Stone. Check on Google. But the eight ways of handling it, the complexity of public policy, greatest common good, who gets what, by when, by where. I'm just giving the process and complexity. Okay, we cannot say, ye de do, wo de do, wo de do, ye de do, right? And a GST type of policy took 20 years to make across governments. And still there was so much of a quote unquote mess. I don't consider it a mess, right? I'll carry on. Uh, now public policy has three elements and each have to be put in place. First is framing. I had a, a clip by one of my batchmates who pushed in the Sarvashiksha Abhiyan. Uh, and that gave the whole detail of how Sarvashiksha Abhiyan was done in the framing to everything. But uh, I I'm not putting it here uh, for things of time. In case anybody is interested and Sir is interested or anybody, tell me, I'll send you more details. If they evoke of not only this, but other small, small literature, not big, heavy literature, uh, some examples here and there for you to embellish, and this presentation is obviously available, okay, for anyone. First is the framing, which requires certain conditions. Second is you have this implementation. Mr. X Ghosh, Mr. Y uh, police inspector, whoever got arrested, Mr. CBI in 2A, misses this. Second is the implementation. Uh, the hospital safety, all that. I'm just giving the current thing, very important. And Michael Dell said that policy is uh, is uh, policy is uh, commonplace. It is implementation which is important. Actually, exact implementation. And third is analysis and evolution. All require different skill sets. The framework is many times different. For implementer, implementer is if you see the execute another, karke fast move karo, file clear karo. Time pe jaake bandobas karo, time pe jaake ye karo. There are different skills. The framer is a more academic guy. He can't implement. That's why some of the very bright officers 
they move into an area which is not to do with daily marpeet. They don't, they can't handle it. I'm calling it marpeet, meaning whether it's excise, whether it is police, whether it is GST, daily interacting with people who speak half growth, move, see that they are thing. They are not equipped to handle it. So, an analysis and evaluation is the third exercise altogether. So, unless all three go together, I hope I'm able to explain somewhat on public policy definition, complexity, elements. We are at around 20, about 25% of the presentation, sir. And uh, maybe uh, if you can see that slide, a few more, I'll be happy. Hmm? Okay, so each requires a different skill set and it has to be seen an unending cycle. Plan, do, check, act. Plan, do, check, act. Plan, do, check, act. You can't have a frozen because in between the environment also changes. Environment changes. Development is occurring so much. Earlier, the DM of a district had only law and order and revenue. Today, he's got about 15 development agendas. India has moved from that time. There's only one DM. Right now, there are 600 districts, only 600 DMs. There may be 400, 500. Now, there are 600. He's working from morning to night nowadays, and they get exhausted far more than, uh, let's say, uh, a Google executive does. And a Google executive or something at least has a commonality of interest running. You have four results, you have KRAs, you have others, you have co-sharing, you have all that. A DM or SP, today's uh, commission has changed. Tomorrow, that other four, uh, other guy will go and get a good posting in CBI. Over. And three, day, three years later, he may come back with DG. So there's a fair amount of uh, uh, chaos which occurs on this. That's the only way. And but it requires a skill set which is different. Okay, uh, we are doing okay on time. It requires a different. I have done a lot of work with the police, lot of work with the police. So it comes back to this, uh, the SHO level, the SI level, to this level, to the commissioner level. I have done a fair amount of work. I have done a lot of work with taxation department. I have my angst with them, especially with the today. Uh, Vishwadi's wife uh, uh, said that I feel very sorry for these police people. Okay, Raat ka bando boss, din mein wo, mein ka ye filmo ki baat hai. They're supposed to do that work. When they join, today internet is there all over. They're not coming in blind. Today they're coming with a clear thing and a clear responsibility. So uh, we should that way also. Uh, get the directions and all clear what is the deliverable. Okay. So each require a different skill set and it's an unending cycle forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward. I'll tell you in the case of GST how it happened. But today it is stabilizing slowly at the end of five years, it is stabilizing a bit. And you can see how you may or may not, I don't know whether you're seeing tax revenues. That's a basic thing for us, for our economy to keep growing. Both our direct tax and indirect taxes are growing consistently. Otherwise, where is all this development coming from? You come to Calcutta, you see a different Calcutta every five years. Calcutta, which we say is uh, West Bengal is uh, still a little laggard, if I may say so. But even here, you see new Calcutta, you see roads, you see various things. You see so much moving because you have money coming from both central and, and uh, direct and indirect taxes. And that is linked to faceless, that is linked to GST, that is linked to compliance. And that's a positive thing. GST, the worldwide people come and study us, what we are doing. So framing, implementation, analysis, and evaluation. Now it's a heavy slide. This is a heavy slide. And, but this is how it goes, okay? I'm going to give two slides. One is policy framing, and second is how it actually occurs. Uh, in framing, as I said, uh, you can't have a great policy in playing the game of catching up. 
you have to be ahead of the curve on the time. You cannot say that abhi ye unfortunately is hui to ab naya policy bana do. Safety ka bana. I mean, this one, you have to think ahead all the time in trends. And I say, not my quote. This is actually somebody's quote. I won't know. It has to see the futuristic five years, seven years. And we in India are play the catch-up game a little more frequently than we should be doing. I'm not saying it is easy. It will require a 10 to 15 year exercise to get it over with. Because it will mean using of academics, using of policymakers, using of administrators, and using outside stakeholders like NGO, CSG, lobby groups, private lobby groups, media, judiciary, merchant chambers, and all will come with their agendas. Okay? How will a, I went through this with the, in my civil aviation policy and saw the lobbying occurring and the administrators and the politicians quite lost, quite lost on it. So this is the framing. In US, the academics and the government, they interchange. Robert McNamara was the World Bank president. He came and became the defense secretary. Goldman Sachs head became the finance secretary. People, and that's how they have academicians come, go. It's a really, in India, you have the Indian Administrative Service will block everybody. Because, uh, sorry, my S friend won't like it, but uh, my brother it agrees to this. They will not block. They allowed a, a lateral entry into civil services. All of you may have heard that it got locked off. That's all. Uh, so it's an issue. It's an issue of keeping our domains. And uh, it, Modi had a good thought. He had wanted to have 500 people in. They tried the first 40 and then things became so difficult for them. And they came out. So, you know, talent infusion, moving here and there is not so... Uh, Leave aside agenda, it requires skill also to handle them. If a corporate guy comes into as a JS, he has to be inducted and seen. If a JS becomes a corporate guy, he has to be inducted and seen. So policy makers, policy administrators, outside, and as I said, each one of them will have uh, the same problem with the government has the same problem they have. So I'll give an example when my brother was Secretary Mines. Tata's, and I'm quoting the name for effect, they would come, there was a case which was going on. So my brother said to Tata's, here, I am trying to help you, you can't make a simple representation. I am here on your side in a way, because I see the merit in the case, but we expect the Tata's to make a proper representation. So, if you wait for the civil aviation thing, you will see how it was actually done and how it kept on moving forward, backward. But I said India is moving. Let's not be, uh, I'm talking idealist stuff and let's move forward. Uh -huh. Now the, one minute. Now this is again a very dense slide. It starts with identification, agenda setting, moves to policy articulation, moves to policy adaption, moves to policy implementation, moves to policy evaluation, and then there's a revision, plan, do, check, track, and revision. Each one is a heavy exercise which has to be done by groups, by standing groups. You must have heard of standing committees, you must have heard of Bills being passed, you would have heard of the two. So it takes, because it has to cover the last mile. I'm not giving the self Siksha Abhiyan case here uh, right now. But that would have highlighted how, if you want, I can send that interview of Mr. Amarji Sinha, uh, how he explained. And after that also, it faltered. Do you know where it faltered? Any guesses? Do you know what self Siksha Abhiyan was? I'll tell you, you may not know. The Supreme Court through the Unni Krishna judgment had said that up to 14, everybody should be educated. Simple this. 
So they set up a lot of uh, schools here, last mile, which is there in Amitabh, uh, in Amartya Sinha's interview. And then he traveled personally. Uh, he was a road scholar, by the way. He was a secretary of rural development. Out of 600 uh, districts, he traveled 480 districts personally. The whole team I've seen him making presentations were on to making each, each element they did, brought up something up, and then he, in his interview, casually says we made a mistake. Not one mistake allowed. The mistake was that everybody will be promoted. Up to, I think, the 10th, I've lost track. Huh? Huh. Up to 8? Huh. So, huh? So, you know, he says we could not measure the evaluation. We didn't assess them for evaluation. Now you have everybody there, and I'll show you the ACER survey, what it says. And I run an NGO where we teach 24,000 children. That's the second thing which is not there. So one sees the how that one area, you cannot just casually say, at 20 years, sub Shiksha Abhiyan is there. And you have this whole issue of people saying employment, go oh, and employability, non-employability. 20 years, and you can't just say one line key. We didn't have evaluation. So it has to have the last mile. I'm repeating if that is a very good 50 minute interview by him. Uh, if, if sir wants, anybody wants, I can send it to you. Right? But having said that, we are moving. But we are not also moving. <laughs> so some critical elements, and I'll tell you where we are not moving. It's quite harsh, some of the realities of India. All right. So some critical elements, it requires tremendous top-down and bottom-up insights. Tremendous. Unfortunately, the uh, Secretary Health becomes Secretary Petroleum, and he has to have the last mile policy, and he has so many files per day coming, and each one of the loaded files many times, because people below have loaded it. The case of coal, where the Secretary went blind, and I think he went to jail. Because they said, as a secretary, how can you do it? <clears throat> how can you do it? But, well, he, uh, what was the gentleman's name? Anyway, uh, he said, Mane paise personal nahi khaya, but that's your role, bhai. You let the whole thing fudge up. And then the Supreme, uh, Supreme Court came, cancelled role. So, tremendous top down and bottom up insights. It's only in India that uh, a rural development will become economic, the economic will become somewhere else. It's only here, I don't think. We are that right to manage it. Now, the policymakers require skill in bargaining cross section. This consensus development is something which the best person who did in this, uh, I think, to my mind, were two Atal Bihari ji and Jetli. He would cross talk and say, Bhai, you are this, you are not this, you common good, you are not going to do this. You know, it's a very heavy skill which is required because you have different people wanting different goods, different this, there, there. Today, doctors wanting some policy, somebody wanting some policy. I'm coming back to the current case which is bothering us so much, the horrible thing which happened. So somebody has to have this skill of cross-checking here, there. There's a book by uh, Anil Sarup who did something like that. People are interested. I'll send you this list later on. It can be circulated. Very tough. Now, drafting policy is a skill. And legislation is a skill because that's a dot and comma. If you put this dot wrong, something else will come up. And that guy will say, Ki, dekho, ye dot hai. Mainne to yehi kiya na. Aapne wo comma sahi kiya, to wo kuch aur ho jayega. You have therefore your books and books and books and books of rules and laws, rules and laws. They come thicker and thicker and thicker and thicker. I don't think there's a, the India earlier, the IPC was only this thin. Put by Macaulay, it was this thin in 1858 or something. That's all there was, and CRPC was this big. Imagine the foresight, the thinking, how well the depth they came up with. Now we have back to back, back to back, back to back. It's an area which is, we have to see. Then criminals will merit, horse trading. Whip is a political thing. The boss will say, 
This is what you have to say. And no political guy. In US, it is not there. In US, at the end, the famous bill, infrastructure bill, the Democrat was saying, I won't allow. India, if they say no, you're out of the circuit. The whip concept occurs here. And there's a significant role of standing committee. These are, I've attended a few of these. The very, I told you the politician is very bright. Very bright. Give him a free hand, he will do a fabulous job. But unfortunately, he doesn't have a free hand because he has to go and get those blessed votes. So give them a chance. But still, Atal Bihari is updated. There was a case where the moment they became PM, something came up. People said he filed me, I forget the name. And he said that he saw it, he didn't see any merit in it. They told the guys, you know? We are there to bash the opposition is a role. But go go get something else, you know. Famous statement of statured people who can run uh, with it. I'm not sure if there's anybody existing or who is existing, or whether he has a stature, whether he can handle it, I'm not sure. Worst, of course, is the US election. Mr. US citizen is here. You don't know. Mr. Bishwajit is a US citizen. And I said, I've, I've got tired of hearing these debates now. My view is if Trump wins, either the American public is very stupid or I'm very stupid. Because just goes on and on and on. Uh, I won't know. And I'm too young, uh, too humble to say anything. But everybody is giving his side in it. Right? Uh, nobody in India is saying that the Democrats, when they come, what will they do to India? See a history, what the stance on India has been. Everybody is into Trump and yay or oh, it's not yay, 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 so the, and there's a quiz here, so listen. Finally, there are six success rules administratively. I've finished the policy. I've finished everything. It should be administratively doable. It should be technology feasible. It should be politically acceptable. It should be judicially tenable. It should be emotionally relatable. Farm laws, it was not emotionally relatable. And it should be financially viable. Now, I've kept it jumbled. Which is the one? All of them are important. Which is the one which has to happen? Has to happen. Out of these. Without that, I've built it up quite a bit by now. What else? Any other? <laughs> All right, I can add on. I can add on. But what is the one? I mean, this is a significant. I've been harping on this on and off, on and off till now. Uske bage raahi kuch hoi gayi nahi. Judicial aa jayega. Technology answer nikal lenge. Bahut tez log nikal lenge. Huh? I think that boy gave the answer. That boy gave the answer. Unless it is politically acceptable, unless they handle, in, especially in coalition government, the backroom areas, they're all dash bright, okay? Each understands 10 times what we all collectively understand, okay? okay. They're hardworking 10 times than all of us collectively. I've seen how, how actually an interaction occurs Second hand, first hand also, the civil aviation policy, unless it is politically acceptable, nothing else can work out. And this is the one learning, which uh, if the group takes away, it will be a significant learning. And if you see IC814 on something that I would encourage you to see it, you will see all the time, People are saying, this coalition government, they had to release one, uh, one terrorist, the CM of uh, 
Jammu Kashmir said, I will not release him. Then they said, okay, release him. We will get a sign. Then they sent the best aid bureaucrat. He said, no, but he said, we've already committed. He signed. So unless this area is handled, and this area should be handled worldwide. Okay? Rest will fall in place, sir. Over a period of time, it will fall in place. There are enough bright people to handle it, or to block off, or to save. And financial viability also serves Shiksa Abhyan. There's a 40,000 crore deficit. And Jaswan, Finance Minister Jaswan Singh went to Atal Bhai, Bihari said, nahi. He said, Jaswan, bachche hain, karne do. Famous dialogue. Bachche hain, jane do. Kar lenge kahin se, 40,000 crore. You know, I know this quote, uh, what he said. Now, since it may have become heavy, and sir has agreed to stay, I will put in one laughter. Laughter, how do I press this here? Just help out. One slight laughter film. Okay. One laughter film, okay. This is an Airtel ad, long back, sorry. Then there could be one more laughter film and I have reached uh, about 70% of my... Okay. So, you have to look for your start. What is that? Koi, when my uncle kicked Koi coming in, Unco Kase Kisko Karna, Koi coming in, what is that? On my pair of spirit depend for that, how they are sober, have the larger thing, how they don't know, and uh, and uh, Neto would look benign. Shall die or sorry, I'm looking for some good even thing, yes. I will become a man many times. Okay? Uh, I th thanks for seeing this. And then it's a routine. And it was my pleasure to come. Always. Thank you. Okay? And as I said, this case, I'm not fully trapped, but the Nirvaya case, I fully, fully, fully researched out. And the apparent and the actual was so different. What happened there? Yeah? Uh, are we going okay? Hmm? Okay. So, uh, it won't take too much time now for the first one. Uh, we started at, yeah, we are on time. So there are some elements and trends on policy making which are occurring. Uh, as I was saying, whole policy is very transitory. Everybody comes, goes, comes, goes. There's no institutional memory. Things spread. Uh, people have no time to research, move. There's no training on policy making. Lal Bahadur Shastri Academy will give some weird ones. There's no intense people move from administration to training, training to administration. Extremely tough, but that's how our reality of civil services and politics is. We don't allow others to come in. We don't want to others to come in. How bright can a person get? How bright can a person get to get this such a large cross-state, cross-federal greatest common good definition? They're this thick, those reports at times. But how? So in civil aviation policy, uh, the JS asked me, I got, I was getting aggressive first. Uh, they, our group, they didn't know that, that we did all the research and move. So he said, uh, Mr. Arun Kumar, now he's secretary, somebody has different Arun Kumar. How do you see government policy making uh, 
Can you give feedback? So I said, Mr. Arun Kumar, if you want, if this table detailing, which you have done, which we have done, which our competitors have done, which is Indigo at that time, we would have been in the corporate sector sacked across the table for lack of detailing. And then once the secretary, Mr. Chaube, he came later to me, Akbar, so he didn't get angry, he was angry, he was angry, so he, he gave all the data, we were giving data. Then I asked the secretary, sir, we have given so much data, can you tell us what data you have? He looked at me because nobody talks like that to uh, such a senior guy. So it was learning for me. And since uh, we may not be able to see it in entirety, I'm giving some snippets from, from that policy making of civil aviation policy. I'll come to that. Again, I'll go to, there was actually handling security issues. National security issues were getting violated. And then see the brilliance, somebody said, go and meet Dawal, and I met Dawal. Now for Dawal, five minute meeting requires three days of preparation. You're so sharp. I thought he'll give only five minutes. But then he perked up and said, and he gave us 40 minutes. And then he tells his PS, get the secretary CV revision tomorrow to my office. In, my, in front of me, he shouldn't have said it. And then his PS said he took the secretary civil aviation right, left, right, left, right, left, because he was there violating something simple on Indigo's uh, behest. And then a lot of things came by in that, but it didn't even come by. People want to sit, you can see, because Indigo kept moving court <clears throat> and using that part. But if you have patience, we'll go through it. So there's no training. Scholarly inputs are reduced. All generalists. Nehru, uh, time pay, other than economics, Nehru had put in a lot of scholarly inputs. Uske baad is all, you know, ram ram, uh, going on. Kisne kya bola, ye bola, wo bola. Logical. Logically nahi chalta, you have to understand it scholarly. No, evidence basing is very much lacking. And stakeholders can also be very chaotic. All of them will come with half data, half this, hey, wo, just half pre. Nobody comes with data from That's what I said. The secretary minds tell Tata, ki, you, why don't you give a presentation? I'll tell you what lines to give. House of Tata's can't make us proper presentation. Yeah. Now, there is some revival in the last decade. One is a lot of management schools which are coming up in public policy, lots and lost. There are a lot of think tanks who are not coming. In fact, a lot is happening in public policy. We hope it comes through. A lot of advocacy groups. So there is a last, for about 10 years, 15, that part has moved rather well. Good modeling is done. Good exercises are done. Sufficient, not sufficient, perhaps not. But still nascent. Still nascent. And people say, ke ye, tum zyada si bahut kar rahe. Ka na, US ka dekh lo na. Go and do it. And otherwise, I'll do it for you. How they do it and how we do it. Okay. How uh, think tanks and advocacy groups are getting funded? Uh, I have worked for think tanks, so I know. I know. Uh, uh, many of them are government funded, like uh, some are like Carnegie Endowment are funded by the original funds. NCR is government funded, ICRIAR is government funded, CPR was private, and many industrialists only funded or endowment, what I'm coming today, I'm coming on an endowment related thing, and people pick up chairs and, and fund their uh, or if now some are tend to get motivated, so if that is a question, some, uh, not all. Like uh, ORF is reliance funded. Some are, that will be clear, and everybody knows this. And you pick up what their analysis is and pick a run with that analysis for the motion, against the motion. You invite everybody and then the journalist can handle it. If 
you, like when I argue with people, I say this is for the motion. Pick up these arguments, na? They may or may not be able to give, or uh, many are government funded. Like NIPFPF is a think tank only for finance ministry. And they do a lot of work. They're very bright people, Ratan Banerjee and all. They do it because basic modeling has to be done first. Acer is, I think I'll put Acer. Uh, Acer has come, that is private, totally. Pratham is private. So they put the Acer uh, feedback every time. But I'll come to the questions. Classic domain of public policy, but money counts. So if you don't get, I worked for a fund where we went to uh, Rajiv Kumar, who was the vice chairman of Niti Aru. He runs Pahle India. So he went, we said, we are the neutral thing we want to work on, e-commerce, how it is doing, what it is. There are good agendas which they can pick up. And they have their thorough. They have a methodology which they work on. Okay. Okay, earlier it was governance, it just moved. I think I'll move a little fast uh, because this will get heavy. And this is then they moved to international trade, fiscal, economic development, defense, diplomacy, social issues, particularly education and health. Environment is more recent. Somebody said environment. It is more recent, which is coming up. Economic development. This is how the flow and the interchanges. The interchanges, I will tell you how it works. So very wide diversity, changes, global shocks, task of public policy, making it nimble, move, flexibility, working with models, seeing evaluation, checking is a task which is very aggressive. Now, you see how they become cross-border. Earlier, security just moved law and order. But now it's moved from home, defense to include foreign affairs, industry, commerce, science, technology, finance. So they become borderless because the world is becoming borderless. Complexity improving, increasing. This is important, uh, and you may like it. A public policy has got different formats. One is you have multiple stakeholders. All have their own views. They'll come and say it also. A second is there's a comparative. I win, you lose. In civil aviation, that happened. That's one part. This, as I said, either you have vision-led or reactive. India, mostly we move reactive. GST was, I think, a little vision-led. Uh, tech was vision-led, the telecom. And see how it impacted India. This is routine. Some require cabinet approval, some legislative approval. Constitutional requires separate approval. So that's the other way. Some are just given by cabinet approval, you give. Some require legislative check and constitutional requires very different. Some are simple. Actually here, whatever they're saying is very simple. Safety, FT, whatever they're doing is very simple from a policy point of view. But when there are interfaces here, moving up and down, uh, they get complex. Uh, not coming. Huh. Some are time bound. You have to do it within time. And everybody has to get down and get it done. What is that? Some are... I'll carry on. Last is implementation, and there will be a film after that. There's inadequate people. US compared to us has got a population ratio to public servants seven times. Here, you just can't handle it. Seven times uh, ratio. Therefore, you give service. Therefore, you give taxes to fund them. Therefore, you get systems in place. There is no characteristic policy, poor link adequate. There is no acha karo, nahi karo. Every, every IS officer gets a famous apex grade, everyone gets it. So 
Okay. At the most, they say insignificant posting, that posting. They don't lose their jobs. Worry of C plus I. C plus poor process and schedule of thought that we know so fluctuating chaos. Actually, all of this can take a full session, but I have to move fast. And worry of four Cs. Four Cs for them is CAG, CBC, CBI, and courts. And I, uh, an officer, I think, will not touch pen to paper unless he protects himself and fair also. And fair also, the four Cs. And, but there's an answer to that within them only, which I've not get into. Uh, but I've discussed this, okay, how serious it is. Yeah. And it is not as serious as they make out. It is not as easy as we think. It's somewhere in between. And then actually, we call the four Ps. What works is money. Pairvi means relationships. Unless you know someone, you Okay? You go, you will not even be given an appointment. Fair? Parokari is actual advocacy. Actual advocacy. And parishani means you will strong arm the guy. Strong arm the guy if he doesn't believe. This is not my, uh, this is a saying in Bihar. The government works on, they say three P's, Pesa, Pervi, Parokari. This is saying, government only works with Pesa, Pervi, Parokari. So that's why I told uh, my sister-in-law, okay, that cop has not to be uh, the guy who's in the rain. Don't have sympathy for him. That's his job. He went through the internet. He's a BSc, he's a MSc. Why don't he uh, go and put his head into the private sector? He's got security, he's got everything, and he's got one of all these P's. Okay? Core abilities displayed in projects. Actually, if you see floods, so they're very bright, and if they're given a fetter free, if you see floods, earthquake, you see how they galvanize. That's a potential. You would have all seen. Not this type of thing here. I'm sorry, I'm coming back. we it's getting confused by a lot of people coming in. But if you really have floods, earthquakes, you see how they galvanize and, and make things happen. COVID, COVID, we all say know about COVID, but I used to see in the morning how it was done. I used to go every day, how the police will be there from four morning to 12 night, bouquet to get people out. Crisis may, that shows the real caliber of our bureaucracy. Otherwise, so there is a film now on how to handle uh, one relief, or one or two more slides after that for this part. Uh, can you? Huh? You did this slide, right? After this. Uh, so go ahead. After this. Yeah. So this is a film from Spain. Huh? This is not an Indian film. So this thing is, as I said, universal. It is very universal. It is not India specific. Degree matters, but it's, uh, Spain is a new, it's a EU country, developed country, everything we know. And this is a real life thing which I got. Backward. Uh, oh, sorry, backward.
Okay, so this is a relief. Uh, this is not India. And uh, it's a worldwide thing. The only thing here in the Pesa Pervi Perikari Parishani, what what did he do with that girl? In India, what would have done? What would have happened? Some thinking, anyone? Sirs, India, what would have happened? And what did she do? India would have given Pesa straight across. Okay. India, you would have made somebody call in if you had the contacts. India, no perukari would have gone just like that without any preparation. In India, you won't, you would like to say ki ye karadunga, wo karadunga. You will not do basic work. That's a India pain. That's a India pain. Right? Uh, <clears throat> With, when I was with XYZ company, there was classy companies. You know, when you are presenting, before the question, question before the question was coming, we articulated the answer. Then, because we couldn't do PESA, we did Pervi because he had contacts. And he knew, if we do it, we will do it. In one case, we got to say, I said, please, if there's a cell phone, have a heart. Okay. Generations don't change. Okay. So, <clears throat> quickly to run what Nitish did in his first round, 10 years. Fabulous project work he did in, in Bihar. He was in a constant mission mode. Very demanding work culture. His secretary and all would fall sick and he would be leading the first one, not the current Nitish. He found opportunity, uh, found answers rather than get, there is a case which I will tell what he did. And he sidestepped the politicals. He picked 15, 20 bureaucrats and worked, just sidestepped his direct bosses because they would get into agendas. He found these apertures because there were he, there were a lot of Gundaras there. But he, he that now DGP Abhiyananda, who is there now, said Ki, aise to nahi We will not be able to catch them. He found the Farm uh, Firearms Act. And he arrested the whole lot on illegal acts. So he had a court case, the judicially tenable. And he arrested the whole lot after that. So very good, but then politics have come in the way. We all know what's happened, why it happened. Okay. <clears throat> the last of the slides, policy impact evaluation is least talked, least understood, but very important. Should be independent. Some third, second party should do it. You cannot have the same party doing it. And they should have competence. A lot of resistance from bureaucracy because they don't want to be evaluated. No? Today, what evaluation will occur for this? Where? There should be at least uh, X number of people suspended and one or two removed from service. Okay. There is increasing impact of policy advocacy groups, corporates, merchant chambers. There is more professionalism coming, a long way to go. Signs of improvement in India, especially since 2004, a uh, lot of good things had happened, but many times the data is not uh, correct in India anymore. And therefore, ASER, I told, is from Pratham. I'll move fast on this. They did this, how all this Sarv Shiksha Vyan was working, but, uh, but bureaucracy, they don't even attend the ASER programs because they anti them all the time. If they give an annual presentation, the bureaucracy doesn't attend it. And therefore, as a result of it, demonetization, we've all seen. Still don't know how much money came back. We all know. Okay, black kar denge, ye kar denge, wo kar denge. Still don't know. In fact, they said that nothing came back. 
effectiveness on GDP unclear. It is not unclear. It hit us very badly. And 54 notifications in 45 days. How does a businessman handle it? How does he handle it? Shows, I counted the number. <laughs> How wrong in principle, wrong in implementation, wrong in everything. And the black money was anywhere sitting abroad. Who keeps black money here? They send it abroad through Hawala. Wrong, wrong, wrong. Clear shifts worldwide. I'll move fast on this because it may be getting heavy now. More, it's getting more, more hostile, more difficult. India is a, I call it a sloppy elephant with the states clinging to control. Futuristic, you have to move with formulation, implementation, evaluation, each element, and I've written down whatever, but it's a little heavy, so I'll move. We've covered formulation, implementation, evaluation. There are a lot of emerging opportunities and threats in policy making which are coming. Private sector regulation, PPP, it's getting difficult. I would, demographic lack of employability, which you all hear of. Globalization, coupling of India with the world. So a lot of things are happening at a very fast pace. Uh, I, Tufflerian pace, uh, Alvin Toffler is something which uh, people should read. What it says is, that what happened in 1,000 years earlier came became in 100 years. What happened in 100 years became in 10 years. What happened in 10 years becomes the one year. That's called Alvin Toffler's pace. We're all panting in an individual thing. Earlier, when we were young, we didn't have any opportunities. We did engineering or here, give IAS or something, gave an MBA. Now, all of you have the stars. And therefore, difficult choices. That is Tofflerian pace, which is there. Conclusions, we are neither a failed nation nor a failing nation, but a, I call it flailing nation with a lot of thing. And unfortunately, before we say that we are doing this, we are doing that, this is a 10 year old slide. This is our ranking amongst 180, 190 countries as on 10 years back. And some of them we've actually when I went to Dhupuri, I saw it happen. This is our ranking. When the rankings are bad, we'll say that all are motivated. When the rankings are good, we'll say, Dekho, bola na, ranking kitna achha hai. But this is a reality which we have. We cannot wish away what is there in India, but things are still moving. Four underlying electoral reforms, the, the mother of all evils. Today, India elections are more expensive than US elections, okay? Civil services overhaul, nobody will let it happen. Tax compliances, the rich don't pay tax, the don't pay tax. Agriculture is don't pay tax. Our tax collecting ratios are low, although they've improved. Judicial reforms, who will touch? Who will touch the lords? Who will bend the cats? And how do we know Jugal and Ullu Banawi? Okay. I think that is the end of this part. If you have the stamina, five more minutes on civil aviation. Would like to sit five more minutes? Huh? I think so. so. I was anchoring this national civil aviation policy on only one segment, which is the ground handling. Ground handling means service for aircraft arrival, departure from the airport. So to quickly say, ramp handling, passenger traffic handling, you know, all that is ground handling, not the flying, not the maintenance, not that, right? As uh, you would see, it's a intensely manpower intensive exercise, intensely security uh, driven thing, uh, and intensely logistics driven thing. And there's a history, it started with IC814 hijacking. I was saying that at that time, you should see that uh, uh, serial where you will see the commanders couldn't come there because it got refueled. The Bowser, it refueled. And the Bowser, the ground handling guy was a temp. 
So he was told, he don't refuel, don't refuel. This was not trained, not permanent, not anything. He refueled it. That was how it kicked off. And therefore, 2007, it is said the ground handling will be done only by specialized agencies who have the correct equipment. It will take into the cabinet security, CCS it is called. It will have permanent manpower. Because all send in permanent manpower could do a major problem because they are more attached for various things. They'll have less numbers of ground handling. Earlier, anybody could do it. Stringent equipment and processes, long policy. So only the best in class security cleared agencies with permanent employees qualified. That is how the 2007 policy was. And therefore, my clients invested so much money, set up. Then came this Federation of Indian Airlines, headed by Indigo. I'm taking names for, uh, for interest, and uh, nothing helped, because I was with that Indigo chief in one of the things, and I had to. So there's nothing hidden about that. Uh, Rahul Bhatia. I was with Rahul Bhatia advocating at that time. What they did is, first they said, give us time to implement. Three times they asked extension. After a third time, they moved High Court. After High Court rejected, they moved an SLP in Supreme Court and dragged down for eight years without getting it implemented. 2015, about 10 years, a new policy starts coming. New policy came. Objective to have flexible, competitive, safe, secure, all that objective they had given. Nonsensical, in a way. It reversed all the conditions of the 2007 policy. Yeah, any, it came back to 2007. So then no limit, everything was, and could use contract label. Everything got reversed. Uh, then we took the advocacy or we set up the ground handling association, did all the research, international practices moved, uh, I had anchored it, bottom-up frameworks, what it means. And in six months, we made 55 representations and 33 face-to-face -face meetings. And I was very surprised that there is something called the inter-sector, because we met the minister for once, the minister was not bright. And well, he was a political guy, TTP Kathab, Nam Bulgaya, South Indian guy. So we pushed, 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 and they have the stakeholder meeting. What I was surprised and my learning was the day before the AAI chief called me. AI is Airport Authority of India. He said, what are your issues? He used to represent the next day. He's asking me, and I'm, a, I'm an interested partner. I told him all the issues. These are the issues. Which are, ha, 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 ha. Next day when the meeting occurred, 30, 40 people. 30, 40 people. And the civil aviation secretary said, Mr. XYZ, what is your view? He parroted all the view, all, everything that I had said the day before. I was absolutely shocked at his. Now, how could he do it? Parroting exactly what one stakeholder, he became a friend for me afterwards. So I said, why didn't you take? But this, I'll not get into those details beyond the point. But we never paid anything to him. We never think. He was just came, called us the night before, evening before. Next day, parroting him. That's why I told the JSK. Then we did a lot of media coverage and pushed in. Stakeholder issues from my Cisco, we leave it. We, this was the perukari. Per I'll leave this. I'll leave this because this gets heavy. I should have not had this. Results, many recommendations accepted. Some critical areas still slipped by, and FI again moved for delayed implementation. At that time, I left this assignment. So again, delayed implementation, same racket which happened earlier. I don't know where it ended, because I left that assignment. Mr. Dawal called the, the civil aviation, and I mean, the last one, just to show how quickly they can move and how consensus they can be. Mr. Dawan went for the negotiation away. 
Uh, so he knew. He was part of the negotiating team. So he knew the realities, what happened, like, and he's very bright, obviously. And the last one is I was having a haircut after all this in Bombay. And a call came. Um, NSS ke secretary bulle. NSS aap se baat karna chate hai. So my hair anyway went up 90 degrees, no? I didn't require a haircut anymore. So the only thing which came was sir, 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 sir. He said, jo aapne bola tha sahi kiya, wo maine kara diya hai. I thought I'll call and tell you. I am I was nobody there. And then he lost track, I lost track. I meet him sometime, he doesn't recognize me. I obviously recognize him. Uh, so uh, I think that is the end of today. Thank you very much. I hope uh, it was not too heavy. I hope it went well. If any suggestions, you could tell either through or not because Thank you, Mr. Kumar. We learned a lot of things which were not ever. But before going any further, may I request Madam HOD, Madam Malika Sarvadikari to felicitate the speaker, please. We are now at the fag end of the program. Now it is my part to give a vote of thanks. Vote of thanks, the first must go to the speaker. The way he presented, we are really thankful to him. And uh, as engineers, we must have faced part of it or many of the things in our professional life. We tried to face them. Sometimes we tried to bypass them. Somehow we managed. So thank you, Mr. Kuban, for coming here, for telling all these things to us. My thanks to Institute, my thanks to the students who have attended, the faculty members who have attended. Thanks to all of you. Thank you and good evening. Bye. Ah. <laughs> Sorry, we have some refreshment for all of you. Please collect it from outside. <laughs>